So I am back. I think it's around eight o'clock and it is all the way cooled down. It finished almost like my paraffin wax, like those little cloud rings. It's so cute and it's solidified like this. It doesn't really have a smell to it like it did in there. But I'm gonna go ahead and start testing, starting with my CD wicks, of course. tall profile but it's not too long it's not flickering bad or anything like that and it just looks so nice i don't have any fragrance in this it looks gorgeous now we just got just a hot throw so realistically i think because all black is honestly should have a good hot throw it just depends on what fragrance oil you use i think that's what the issue is you know we try certain fragrance oils that are our favorites in general and they may not mesh well with the wax or the wick combination in general like either you know either or for the wax or the wick or the both you know the combination together so you just never know so that's why it's best to try either your top performing fragrance oils but even with that being the case it could be top performing in that wax but not this one so you know you just have to try all of your fragrances and just see which one works because the wax realistically should have a hot throw that's why it's on the market people say it's good you just gotta try certain fragrances not every fragrance or fragrance oil company is gonna be best for what you got going on we'll be trying the scents that i already have i really want to try the cranberry scent because i love the cranberry scent and it honestly has a really good hot throw uh it was really strong inside of my jar this one tunnel because of how i had cut it so yeah that's the first time it's ever tunnel but I had cut off a little too much of the wig and it never got back right, so it did that. But yeah, that's that. It looks so nice and smooth and pretty. I'm just so proud of it. Okay, so this is how it was looking after almost two hours of burning. I think it's almost on the third hour. I started burning this at 7.43. It is, I think, either eight or nine fifty something i want to say eight so this is how it's looking i feel like it's gonna have a good amount of hang up to be honest on this side it looks really good on this side it has a little more wax there so that's how it's looking and you see it's forming a bit of a mushroom but it's not bad it's, it has a very clean burn and the wicks and the flames are very subtle, but they're there and I like it, it's effective. And what I was told doing research about this wax, you shouldn't expect it to, you know, have clean sides on the first burn, it's gonna have to wait till it gets down there. And it also has memory rings. So if you extinguish it, how I did this jar, like too early or cut it too short or whatever. But most of the things run the same thing. If you do it like that, you're gonna have a ring like this basically to where it's gonna continue to tunnel down. Yeah, so you shouldn't expect it to, you know, reach full melt or like clean the size of the jars until it gets further down into the into the burn, honestly. But it's, it's looking like a really good burn. Now, honestly, I probably would have to wick up from this. That's what it's looking like, but I'm gonna let it burn through and see what it's looking like first because it's kind of just making a ring around it. But it's only been about two hours, I think, so far. So it is currently 12, 14. And this side is still here, but it tends to paper once out for some reason. This side is perfectly clean. And I like that. So it has been doing really, really good for its first burn. Cause I'm scared to like have a memory burn around it and for anything to tunnel. But we're still at the top and then we still gotta see what this is gonna end up doing. Okay, so this has been going for about two hours now. And this is this side, completely clean, not hot to touch. I do worry about, you know, possible happening with this because I feel like it doesn't burn as hot 
So like with all this wax hang up on at least one side, I feel like, you know, you won't get as much of a pull. Um, but I do think this is good. It's a nice flame and it does clean the side. We just have to wait probably when it gets lower for it to hit the other side. Um, and you know that little bit of soot right there? I had, well speaking of mushroom, when I was uh, relighting, there was a little piece of mushroom there. It wasn't much, it was just like a little leaflet and I knocked it off trying to uh, light it. So I just ended up dumping it while it was still lit and obviously, you know, the flame hit the side of the jar and it did that. But yeah, so this is how much wax we got left on the side. And, and this is how much wax is created a pool. So with it honestly having a pool this deep like this, so really it's unsolidified here and you know, it's getting a little cloudy down here. So honestly, I think that's really good. And I wouldn't say to go up due to the fact that since it has one, since it's this deep, right? It's this deep going, going here with a little cloudiness and here obviously all the way melted and we still have this left, I think that's pretty good. And I feel like if I go up, I feel like it could be better, honestly, but a little more promising. Maybe with the fragrances, who knows? I mean, honestly, with the fragrances, since it has more of the pool and it's adding fuel to the obvious fire, then it probably could be a little too hot. So honestly, probably this one could be the best. And honestly, it, it looks promising. So obviously, we have to burn it all the way down the jar before we make our decisions. But honestly, it's not looking too bad for where it is for me to want to pull this wick out. And as you can see, it's like almost like a little bug. Like it's like two little leaflets, almost like a butterfly on camera for the mushroom. But I actually really do like these CD wigs. I don't know, it's just, it is like a cleaner burning wick. Like, I don't know if it's the wax or I don't, I don't know what it is, but lighting these wicks, and honestly, when I was putting the flame to it, it barely even wanted to light. To me, that was like really cool because it didn't just light automatically. So to me, that was like, you know, it's, it's a soft burning wick type thing. And honestly, it looks really soft. It looks really controlled and it doesn't just, you know, gravitate towards the fire as fast or doesn't burn as fast, which is the point of CD and CDN wicks. CDN wicks burn even slower than CD wicks. So I think it looks really good for where it is. And this is just the first wick that I'm testing. And I honestly like it. Now, do I really care if I hang up on the sides? No, not at all, but when it gets down, bro, we're gonna see, cause I don't know for now, but when it gets out of the jar, it should be, you know, fine, so. And it's not even too hot to touch. I can leave my hand on it. I don't know, I just really, I'm not used to this. Nice control flames that aren't hot. Like this, I, I really like it. I really like this wax. It's burning so nice. But the main thing is how the hot throw is gonna be. That's the main thing. So since my test candle is burning really good right now, I decided to go ahead and even though it's not even in the middle of the candle yet, it's still kind of high, but it's under like the first little part of um, the thing right here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make a fragrance candle and I'm going to be using one of my like favorite scents from Candle Science from my uh, collection. So I'm not going to be testing a scent I have no idea about like from my samples and stuff. I'm gonna be testing something out of my collection to make sure it works. And I'm using a scent that I like and that I know performs really well. So I'll go ahead and measure that out. And I had to do it in grams because I don't have a scale yet that can measure, you know, point blank blank. So I have to make it do what it do. So I usually use ounces. I just prefer ounces for some reason. But what I was getting was coming out to like, you know, 8.4% or 9.8 and that was just too much in the middle for me. It was, it was too much overboard for me. I don't want to use close to 10%. I don't want to use too far from 9 So I'm trying to be, be around 9%. I was going to use 8 but I wanted to make sure I was doing a lot of research. I don't want to waste no materials, especially no fragrance oils. Because that's the most expensive, especially collective. We could need multiple of those. But um, So I just decided to go into grams because I think that is easier and, and, I, and it is easier. And I got much closer. So I got 8.9% and 9.4%. So I always round up and I round down. So I'm between 233 grams of wax and 234 grams of wax. And to the rest of that, you know, for the fragrance oil, you know, I said I got 8.9% and 9.4%. So I go ahead and measure out my fragrance oil right here. I'm going to make it a full tester. And don't, don't this look like a lot? I had to re-pour because I'm like, that looks like a lot. 
but it was it was accurate and my scale was jumping a bit i don't know if i was putting pressure on the table or what but yeah so i got it wicked and ready to go and i have my wax already measured out and it's on the stove right now since i'm not using this big boy because i don't know if this is gonna be my main wax and i'm only doing small tests right now and then i have to clean this too and i ain't trying to do all of that right now so i'm gonna be warming it up and i think i'm gonna do around because they said do not heat it up past 220 so i think i got my temperatures i'm gonna be doing uh heat it up to 210 uh pour in the fragrance at 200 because they say it pour high or add high and then i also seen pour around 190 so i got some quick temperatures to be working with so you know we're on a tight schedule so what i'm gonna have to do is like do everything at once you know so i may even have to pour in there too because you know walking back and forth from the kitchen and into my candle studio it's probably not gonna be the best decision to make so i think i'm going ahead and bring everything in there right now you gonna see it right there and like I said, I got my wax going. Uh-oh. So I thought I had more time than I did because I put it lower than I usually put it. Well, no, actually, I put it at the same one I usually put it. But for some reason, it came out, it melted a lot faster than usual. So it came out to around 240. So, you know, I'm going to still use it and we're going to see because usually you can go past the wax and it doesn't really burn anything. Um, Especially, you know, if you're not touching 300 or no 400 and like that. It, it still looks good. So... And it also gives me a lot more room for error and stuff. So I heated it by mistake, or by mistake, to 241. Is at 229 right now? So it cools down really, really fast. And I need to go ahead and make that fragrance oil in here while I'm talking. Two So that was a little hectic. I'm cleaning out this right now. Yeah, the, like I figured that was just too fast of um of temperatures. Now with the pouring, with the melting and the pouring of the fragrances, I can do that on the adding of the fragrances. But with the pouring into the jar, because you know I want to give it a little time to you know settle and mix up and stuff. So as you can tell, it's really bubbly. So what I don't think matters too much. I don't think this wax is known for any. Uh, you know, what's it called? Well, not that I know of shrinking, expanding, or even um, or even sinkholes. So I don't think that's an issue. So I can play around with the poor temps. What I, but what I obviously can't play around with is the most important temps. Because that's just for, you know, poor temp is just for the um, aesthetic of the candle and glass adhesion and stuff like that. We can work around it. And also the wax cannot fall out of my jar because of how it is. Even if it is, you know, not adhere to the jar. It can even fall out, so that's good. I can play around with temperatures. I got a little leeway there. Now, obviously, you can't mess with, well, not too much of the um, melting of the wax because you have to open up the molecules for the fragrance to be able to bind to it. One, you can't really see my fingers. And then, two, you can also burn the wax if you go too high. So, yeah. Now, adding the fragrance oil depends on how it, how it performs and how it binds with the fragrance oil. So, that's important. Now, for performance, it doesn't really matter for when you pour it. So, yeah, so that's why I'm like, I can pour, I can play with the pour temperatures and my temperature thing. You know, you have to keep mixing. So, it had got 170 at some point, but then when I whipped it up again, it was like 180. So, I poured around 180. Yeah, so, and it smells really good. Now, honestly, I think that is a good sign. Like, when you start adding the fragrance oil into the wax and you and it smells really good, to me, that just means, oh, it's going to smell good. That's, that's just what I think when you can smell it as it's being binded into the wax. I think that's a good sign. Just remember that I have to let that candle cure for like at least a week, I think. You know what? I think I think I'm mixing it up. Well, I know that it takes cure time. Now with my other wax, it didn't take all of that. And that's what I'm used to. But with this wax, yeah, there's, there's a bit of changes. But I think I'm thinking about the EC26 wax. That one has more soy content. So that one takes longer. 
And I think with this one, I think it's a bit newer. I think it was manufactured in a way to lessen the time that you have to let it, you know, sit and do all that extra stuff. I forgot what it's called, but you know, for the fragrance to perform well, you have to let it sit for a few days. I don't think it's a week anymore. I want to say maybe still set as a week. I don't think it's two weeks anymore. I think it's at least seven days still for the best. I don't know. I don't like that, but hey, I mean, we only testing. We will need to test, so it's not going to just be testing. Or I have to wait all the time. I mean, I guess I kind of do for when I sell it, but it'll take a few days to, you know, be mailed to them. So, it, you know, it can cure like that. There you go, curing. I extinguished it for just a bit so I can get off some of that mushroom. I'm starting to build. Where we are right now, I've been burning it nearly all day. And we're on the sides here, and then we have a little hang-up glove here. And I carried this all the way from the bathroom, uh, well, the hall bathroom, to my bedroom and back, so it's not that hot. Um, it's starting to get hot, of course. This is where the wick is leaning, of course. So this part of my finger got hot. But for the most part, the jar is fine to touch. Honestly, this was a success off first bat and first try. I already made a fragrance candle, which I'm thinking about going ahead and making all the fragrance candles to go ahead and start testing. So, because of, since I have to wait for, you know, the hot that would be good, I have to wait for them to cure. I might as well just go ahead and make them all, and I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't know if I should do half testers. Obviously, you need to burn the candle from the top to the bottom anyway. Okay, so I almost forgot to show y'all, because uh, I kind of ended the video abruptly, but this is the scented, well, the unscented candle that I was testing on, as you can see, like a really, really clean burn. Little to no soot, that was, I think I did that. Um, and this is how it's looking. So I've already, as you know, I've already made one tester, which was because I have so many videos backed up and it has been like 20 days since I made this candle and tested it. I made the first candle that y'all see in this current video, which is right here. I've already tested it all the way down and it succeeded. To see me in the same outfit, like one to two videos later than this, because I'm ending this video, because it, it ended a, a, a bit abruptly. But yeah, so obviously I, uh, I was confident in how this one burn to go ahead and make my first test candle this one and then there's going to be a video after this one with me making the rest of my candles to test and then there's going to be a video after that you're going to see me with the same outfit in of me ending that video of where I showed y'all my test results for all of my candles so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video like comment and subscribe and you know like I said I have you know videos from a few days ago and videos coming out after this one so stay tuned and turn on the alert notification thingy down there but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed and yeah